You never, you never know when you're doing something who you're going to impact. You never know, you know, who's going to hear you say something. It's going to change somebody's mind. Uh, Joey was just asking me a minute ago, he said, how many hotel staff do you think we've converted over the years? <laughs> I'm, I'm sure some. I mean, you can't come in and out of a room like this without hearing something that plants a seed of doubt, and that's really the key. Get that doubt train rolling. <laughs> so, uh, one other speaker we have. She is the co-host of the Humanist Hour podcast. She's on the board of Camp Quest South Carolina. Ooh. Clap for South Camp Quest South Carolina. Why did you clap and you guys do it? Man, it's like you're at work. Church? Uh, she's also on the board of the Tribe of Free Thought. And uh, I just want to bring up Kim Ellington and have her say a few words. Shaughnessy 
Nikki and Matt and Audra and everybody who supports Campus South Carolina. Woo! Thank you. Very near and dear to my heart. In fact, since I'm up here and I get the chance to have the microphone, I'm going to announce that I am a, actually the new camp director this year. I wish I had a picture because this is not what I look like at camp. <laughs> There's no sense in Aiken, South Carolina in July when it's literally 109 degrees. Yeah, this is not what we look It's not what I smell like here. <laughs> That's what I smell like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, here it goes. It's not pretty. It really, really isn't good. And let's see, Tom, Triangle Free Thought people are here. Sue Kocher, our new president. And Linda's here, and Deanna, and so, I mean, it's just, it's so much fun. It's so much different than like Denver was, where I do just the national folks, and I'm here with like all my people. And then everybody else that I've met, and all the things that you're doing, and you're in your own towns and cities doing what you're doing, and it's just, it's, there's a, for me, it's a invigoration, I guess, that we're here doing, I know that we're working right where we are in our neighbor, our state and our neighbor state to actually get stuff done. And you know, we, we, we meet each other, and there's been a lot of like, well, hey, what do you do? Like, like what we each do can be like, you know, given one word or <laughs> sentence, right? Like, what do you do? Oh, I'm a, I'm a one word answer. But it's, you gotta start there, you gotta start somewhere. And so you might be wondering, besides being the co-host of the Humanist Hour, what else I do? My, um, my spouse would say I collect acronyms, like, AHA, FFRF, SCA, SCNC, TFS, CQSC, NAACP, ACLU. Did I forget a couple? Did I say NCNC? Oh, and if I didn't homeschool, it would be the PTA too, but since it's my own school, like, I might have my own, it was just a P instead of the PTA. <laughs> Come out right <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> The co-host, being the co-host of the Humanist Hour is actually one of the very cool things I get to do. Um, yeah, it's like, you know, part of my hobby, which is something you do in your leisure time for pleasure um, that you don't get paid for, but you love because it's your passion, and then more and more of your money goes toward it. And so, like, all those acronyms, this is kind of what I do. But Bo and I get to, we get to interview amazing people, like really interesting, really, really interesting videos, oh, excuse me, interviews. Today on Chris's video was AC Grayling. And I totally geek girled out again because he was the first interview I ever did for the Humanist Hour. I was like, <laughs> I got to talk to you. <laughs> it's so stupid, but it's actually really, really kind of fun at the same time. So we have all these interesting people. And unfortunately, one of the very interesting people is not here tonight. And that would be Jennifer Lovejoy. Anybody know her? Jennifer does great things like, you know, putting on this conference part of the Atheist Avengers, who is sponsoring a lot of this, and she's done a lot of the work, and she couldn't be here tonight. But we're going to talk about her anyway, because she was the first recipient of a little award called the Free Thought Action Hero Award. This is what we're doing here tonight. She got this award because in 2010, the North Carolina Secular Association, which was a coalition of atheists um, and secular humanists, we put build, they put billboards in Charlotte, and um, I think there was some Raleigh, Asheville, Winston-Salem, Greensboro. I might be forgetting some, but yeah, there were several around. And those billboards had a few keywords from the Pledge of Allegiance. You might have remembered a couple. It was one nation, indivisible, without that little pesky under God in there. Does anybody remember these? Yes, this was cool, right? Atheist Nexus covered it, Papios covered it, um, uh, Atheist United, Americans United, the Christian Post, and then CNN, and then ABC. And Jennifer agreed to become the actual spokesman for this One Nation Indivisible billboard campaign. She went on TV, being interviewed as an atheist in Western North Carolina. Yeah. If you've seen a few lists lately, there's an awful lot of harsh places to live in Western North Carolina right now. So this was certainly not a popular thing for her to do. But she did it with grace and dignity, and she represented us quite well. She was the first ever honoree of the Free Thought Action Hero Award, which is given to a free thinker who stands up in the face of adversity. 
the person who will dare to face the blowback that is definitely coming from being one of the three to five percent of Americans who identify, who dare to identify as atheist, as non-theist. I'll quote here, her ability to weather withering local criticism during the controversial 2010 North Carolina One Nation Indivisible Billboard campaign has been an inspiration to all of us who work for a more rational and secular America. Jennifer did not wither. Anybody see, ever seen Jennifer wither? <laughs> Except maybe at the end of the night about 3 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I really wish she was here. I can't pick on her properly when she's in another place. She's busier than ever. She's now the founder and former president of Western North Carolina Humanists. She's a former co-chair for the North Carolina chapter of the Secular Coalition for America. She works for Atheist Alliance of America and is president of the Carolina Secular Association, the group that puts on this amazing conference. She also sits on other boards for organizations that focus on secular issues and humanist values, as well as national committees. I've never considered myself a hero, Jennifer said. To me, the Billboard campaign was an opportunity to reach people who may have otherwise felt alone. It's people who matter to me. And anybody who knows Jennifer knows that's true. She stood up in public, on TV, and in the news, loud and proud, as an atheist, as a non-believer, and for this, she definitely earned that award. So thank you, Jennifer. Love you. I was just like, whatever, obviously there's no God, yay, I'm living my life. And then, like in December of like maybe 2008 or 9, 10, I can't really remember, I happened to be flipping through the news, and there on TV was this group of people who put together a sign telling the real reasons for the season in December. Just a very pretty white sign with beautiful little blue sparkly snowflakes. But they did it right next to a major scene that one of the local groups had put up and did every year in a public park. And not only did they do that, but they were also collecting food for the food bank of, North, of uh, Eastern and Central North Carolina. And I started giggling. I was like old-fashioned tickled, like delighted, there's no other word, so I was like, oh my gosh, these people are out here. These crazy nuts are doing exactly what I would do if I actually got off my butt and did things by just educating and trying to normalize. They weren't mad at religion, they weren't yelling at the Christians, they were just like, well actually, let's give you a few facts and collect some food for people who need it. I was like, all right, this is pretty cool. So I, I looked them up on the internet and found out that they had something called a happy heathen hour in a bar, and I said, these are my people. I was all over that. I said, mm -hmm. So I went there. And it wasn't really long, I walked in the front door and I realized that, that these were my people, definitely. Atheists, to be sure, but smart asses. 
witty, intelligent, you know, loving, compassionate, caring, smart asses. And the first one I met was Harry. So that may have affected my initial uh, impression of who the group was. Smart ass. He's witty. He's, he's, you know, intelligent, very intelligent. He's all those things, compassionate and caring and funny. I mean, what he was to me. <laughs> I don't know if I agree with that. He's funny, most of, most of the time. Um, so, yeah, sometimes, it's just, yeah, absolutely. Like, you know, look at this face, right? Yeah. Or it may have been just that he was wearing a funny t-shirt. Like, honestly, I don't remember. Like, Bo talked about how our brains, like, read, they do things. So he may have just been wearing a funny t-shirt, but I actually just, you know, thought that was his personality. So, whichever, can, I, I kind of got stuff. So whether he dresses funny or if he actually is funny is up for debate. We'll talk about that later. Um, but the fact is that TFS went about doing, doing their business, and that is they're actually in a very caring, compassionate way change, going about changing the world, working for the separation of church and state. And I loved what they did, and a year later I joined the board of directors, and at that exact, that exact moment, Harry became president. I don't think those two things were connected, it was just coincidence, but I like to take a little bit of credit for it. So y'all, the, the subject of atheist leaders can be a loaded one. There are a lot of folks, we're all familiar with the whole, oh, atheists are herding cats, implying that, you know, that we won't be led and we can't be led, and we all do our own thing, and that we shield ourselves from being sheep, and that might be anything church -like. But this is actually kind of cool. I found an article from one of Greta Christina's. There's a lot of good writing out there. And one of the things that she said was, when I say leader, I don't mean person you never oppose. When I say leader, I don't mean person who tells you what to believe. I don't mean enforcer of a dictated belief system. I don't mean dictator, and I don't mean demagogue. And she goes on from there. If you guys look it up, if you didn't see it, it's a really good little article. All those things that she doesn't mean, are exactly who Harry is as a leader. <clears throat> we did not never oppose him. <laughs> we opposed him a lot. <laughs> we made him prove by the skin of his teeth that something that was an idea of his is something that we should do. And he did an amazing job of not telling us what we were going to do, but explaining all the benefits, laying it out. And so we were like, all right, fine, you're right. <laughs> and we did some amazing things. We had a day of reason. Protest is a day of prayer. We got a permit to stand on the Capitol grounds, which is where the day of prayer people had always been, putting an actual physical barrier between church and state that day. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it was well also with another one. We do charity work. We've raised funds for Relay for Life, the American Cancer Society's fundraiser. I think I'm supposed to push another button. that night. Hopefully somewhere in there there'll be some pictures of him with some combs on his head. Um, I think it was underwear on his head. Um, I can't even remember all the horrible things, but they are actually in video. The shenanigans were in the videos his marble teeth. <laughs> oh, Harry. So of all the other things we did, we have video proof of the shenanigans that, were, that went on at Relay for Life. The problem with this Daryl Ray, it was the actual Daryl Ray. The actual um, Relay for Life decided they didn't want atheist money a couple years ago. I don't know if you guys know this. You can look it up and just put Relay for Life or atheist. It was a huge deal. We tried to form a national team, and they said, you can just not be atheist. That'd be great. You still want your money, but don't be that. So we left them, and now we work for the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, and we do the Life the Night, raising money for, um, for blood cancers. Once a year, we sort rotten potatoes from the food bank in Eastern North Carolina. Apparently there are things you can do at the food bank that don't involve mushy vegetables, but it always seems to be what we get. So we increase it. We collect books for Book Harvest, a group that gives books to kids that don't have any. We build fences for the coalition to unchain dogs. We clean parks and we do landscaping for public spaces. TFS people helped organize Rock Beyond Belief, an event at Fort Bragg in response to the Evangelical Rock of Fort, an event that is now defunct because atheists stood up for equality and said, if you're going to do it for them, you're going to do it for us. No! I met Shelly, I don't know if she's here right now, but I met Shelly there, which is cool. Name drop. <laughs> <laughs> totally. During Harry's presidency, we went to the Reason Rally in Washington, D.C. in 2012, and we're going to be going to the next one! Fun. We were part of the FFRF's billboard campaign, putting our 20-foot 
foot tall faces on the sides of roads, explaining that we were good without gods and that's okay, helping to normalize non believers. We've attended rallies, phone banks, and other events to work against Amendment 1. We support the Secular Coalition for North Carolina, getting our voices to the members of the General Assembly. We keep a presence at Out Raleigh and the Durham Pride Festival. We table at farmers markets and other events. Harry appeared in the Scott Burdick documentary produced by Sue, Sophia Investigates the Good News Club, which was featured at the Atheist Film Festival in San Francisco. Work to educate the public, especially the unsuspecting moderate Christians, that the Good News Club is anything but. Harry doesn't work only locally, though. He is also on the National Board of Directors for the Secular Student Alliance. He works at Camp Quest. You always have to clap Camp Quest, people. Come on. Thank you. For Camp Quest, he's a counselor, director of the drama program, and our master of ceremonies at Fire Pit. And if you don't know anything about camp, that is like seriously high responsibility. Fire Pit is the coolest part of camp, except for s'mores. He gets invited to other conventions across the country to speak up on fundraising and group building, and he helps up the Carolina Secular Student Summit. He's on the board of our very own Carolina Secular Association. About two years ago, he listened to what people were saying and started a Secular Sunday program, bringing in new folks who were looking for a place to have a social community uh, with other non-believers, a place where people could just come and be and just start their day invigorated and inspired without religion necessarily as part of the, of the equation. I asked a few people to describe you. Now, keeping in mind that we're neighbors, We've lived next to each other a mile down this road from each other for longer than we've actually knew that we were. I got varied answers describing Harry. Um, infectious was one of the words I got, but I decided not to ask any more questions after that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Some things you just don't want to know, right? <laughs> yeah, around. There it is. Carolina Secular Conference three years ago, folks. Oh, God. <laughs> Robert Ingersoll said, the time to be happy is now, the place to be happy is here, and the way to be happy is to make others so. Exactly. To me, this is Harry. This is what drew me to Harry and Charlotte in the first place, and it's what keeps us close now. Yes. They came to their atheism and their humanism in a completely different path than mine, but the result for the three of us, and I know for most of the people in this room, is the same. This is our one life. The entire point is to make it good and to do it now. And again, in like an hour when lip sync starts, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel Burke from CNN used that particular Ingersoll quote in his like 900,000 page article that he wrote on Harry, the friendly atheist next door. And in fact, for Daniel as well, it was this part of Harry that drew him in to, to do the story in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, you guys, who lies? Nobody, really? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> so the last time I checked, that article on CNN had over 2 million unique views. Yeah. 2 million! No. And 75% of those views, they actually read the whole thing. Like, not just click on it and go away. So that's like 1.5 million people who know our personal, friendly atheist next door now. He's just a guy. He's this guy, you know? Exactly on Beetle Rocks. <laughs> he's just this guy, you know? He's got a family. He's got in-laws. He's got an extended family. He's got a business. And he happens to be good without gods. All of those people got to do that. My favorite quote from that article from Daniel was, on his list of skills, relentlessness ranks higher than discretion. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure a few of these pictures have told that story. Now, I would argue that that is actually not always true. But at the bar later, when we start singing and dancing, you come up to anybody from Raleigh, we'll tell you a few stories. <laughs> I love Daniel's quote. I thought it was really funny. It actually made me laugh out loud. And it's certainly fitting from time to time. But I think two of my favorite people in the whole world actually got it exactly right about Harry. I'm very biased about this. One of them is my 11-year-old daughter. And the other one is my dear friend and chosen sister, Charlotte. So I'm very biased, but I think they're the best. I asked my daughter, Danielle, 
how she would describe Harry to someone who doesn't know him. She's 11. She's known Harry since I've known him, which means for as long as she can remember. And she thought for a minute. And she said, he's goofy when he can be. And serious when he needs to be. It's high praise, y'all. I would love to have somebody say that about me. <laughs> up the best in the CNN article that Daniel wrote. She said simply, he just makes life fun. Harry works hard and he plays hard, and that philosophy has made great things happen for free thought community in general. In the Carolinas and beyond. Oh my God. Hey man, everybody. So Free thought people of the Carolinas and beyond, I present to you, for his willingness <laughs> to stand <laughs> in front of millions of people to come out as an atheist, to be willing to be open about what he really believes and how he lives his life, to stand up in the face of adversity. I would like to present Harry Shaughnessy with the Free Thought Action Hero 2015! that's not quite right, 
and they join up with the others to go fix it. And I think that by being here, you guys are all leaders, and uh, together we're changing things, we're making things happen. And I appreciate every one of you for, for being a part of that, uh, for coming out to conferences like this, and, and many of you do many awesome things. Uh, and um, I'm happy to just be here to, to be with you guys and share. <laughs> so this is pretty awesome. So, um, I don't know, I guess this is great. So I've given this award to others and, and tortured them, so I feel like this is only fair. Um, and uh, I, I don't know, I guess uh, this will be awesome. I will keep it and cherish it. He's, uh, I, I guess, is this is you, Kim? Yeah. yeah. Okay, we'll just have to put like a little hair on it. I guess I'll get a Sharpie. Yeah, hair, that's <laughs> okay. All right, thank you all, and have a good night.